plant party. Last night we had a storm. I think there's more on the way. This guy got knocked out. The squirrels quickly got into its bark, but look at what's going on here. Uh, I just fertilized these guys, so uh, just two days ago I was messing around with this one and it looked okay. I did not fertilize my Oncidiums though. I had them lined up and ready to go to be fertilized next week. So, uh, let's figure out what happened here. And looks like some more got knocked down. Man, always looks alright. The only leaf that's really damaged is the leaf that well, was already damaged, so that's not a big deal. Alright, buddy, you are really in my way. That might seem harsh. They grow like three leaves a week. It's fine, don't worry. Alright, and this is the uh, Hultiana mix cross. Yes. Also looks okay, a little thirsty. A little bit thirsty. I'm just gonna hang them here for now. Because the branches that these were on broke. So, need to figure that out too. Now I need to get back to taking care of this guy. First, get in here and unclip it. Done with you. Alright, and now I have to get out my clippers. Got my clippers soaking in alcohol. I already flamed them. Our cinnamon, right here. Nice cinnamon. Don't get the mean kind. And lastly, things are about to get kind of rough here, so let's go ahead and just give him a drink. I'm gonna go ahead here and see where a lot of the bark has already come out. That's largely more of a squirrel issue than anything else, but you know, I repotted this guy like a year and a half ago and was going to be repotting it again this spring. And I can see that it was root bound and just wasn't taken off into that media. So in a way, maybe this is good that this happened. You can see that this was originally potted in potting soil. It's been growing okay, so I haven't really cared about that. But, you know, over time that stuff goes bad. The question here is what happened? Two days ago this was fine and normally when an orchid goes downhill so quick of course the first thing people start freaking out about is fusarium so what i need to do is get in here and separate these bad pseudo bulbs from the good ones i'm gonna get in here as close as i can go ahead and snip that off now i can have a look here well i see brown from rotting Definitely no purple, but sometimes you have to cut further down to find that. And the purple ring, I've noticed, is a much easier thing to identify Fusarium with, with um, Cattleyas, Cattleya-type orchids. So now I'm going to go ahead and, uh, off-camera, because I need both my hands and my tripod's broken, I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of these pseudobulbs out. I might go ahead and soak it first, um, just to help loosen these roots up, because these bulbs are set inward. So I need to get all these roots loose. So I need to find a bucket and soak this guy. Go ahead and put those back in there and go find a bucket. All right, this is what I found. Should be big enough. I'm gonna go ahead and fill it up with water and get it soaking. Yeah, have it filled up to the brim. <laughs> Forget that displacement is a thing. I'm gonna give this a while to soak. Probably a good 15 or 20 minutes at the maximum end. The problem is this is already like soaking. So I don't want to overwater it, but yeah, I'm gonna let that soak for a while and then I'm gonna actually look at its old bark and see what's going on in that pot. All right, it looks like the bark has broken down a pretty decent amount, but I'm not seeing anything in there that would indicate enough to cause any type of rot or damage. You can see it is much more dirt-like at the bottom, but as I showed earlier, there is potting mix in the root ball of this Oncidium from the original growers. Yeah, this looks okay. I'm not seeing snails or anything like that. Yeah, and considering it's a year and a half old and it's been outside half of each year, doesn't look, actually doesn't look like it's decomposed that much. So, can go ahead and say that the potting mix and 
pests, uh, at least root pests, probably are not the issue here either. Okay, so it's actually probably only been maybe f almost 10 minutes. The air outside is so incredibly humid uh, that I don't think this, this needs to soak for too terribly long. I don't want to overdo things. And I've also added a chopstick to the mix. And that's because I like to use the chopsticks to go in here with fine roots. And this is what I will usually use to loosen things up. I'm gonna do this for a while and come back. This was really in just straight up potting soil. I mean, these were really healthy plants, so I guess that that worked for the grower, but uh, that's not going to work for me. Slowly pulling this open as I go in and comb the dirt out, kind of poke it out of the root ball. Alright, so I went ahead, teased those roots out, I think this is about as good as it's going to get. You can see they're still kind of bound up here, but getting them apart, like they're growing on top of each other, so they're just going to tear either way. So, you might be wondering why fuss with all this, not just take a knife, you know, make a nice clean cut through. I just always like to save as much root as possible because roots transport uh, nutrients and they make a healthier plant. So that's why I like to kind of tease them out and save as much as possible. Also a very important hormone in the growth of plants is in the roots and in the leaves and it's called auxin. So the more viable root you have, the more auxin you have, therefore the healthier growth you should have. You can see looking in here that there is a definite divide between the bad growth and the healthy growth and it is kind of loose from the plant, I'm probably going to go ahead, I think, and start cutting that out. And I'm doing so very shallow up towards the base of the pseudobulbs. That's where I want to start, at least. You can see it's not, not really given. I'm also using my left hand, so not the best practice here either. Okay, so I got the rotten clump off. And here it is. See that? Not something we want to see. It is bright pink, not purple, but it is likely Fusarium. I will say, however, necrotic tissue can also leave discolored rings. Basically, this section has been cut off from the rest of the plant, and that's the discoloration you can see there. It is pink. It's not very purple, but, you know, I'm not always great with um, subtleties and colors. So, I don't see any harm in treating this as if it is Fusarium. I do spray my orchids regularly because I've been battling Phyllostacata with my Vandas and it's spread to my other orchids and it's likely the reason that they're spotting up here. So, they've been getting treated, so it's possible that, you know, it has had this going on and the symptoms just haven't been very visible because it's new. It's been growing vigorously. There's been minimal shriveling, but the shriveling occurred a long time ago. And sometimes with oncidiums, once they shrivel, they just don't unshrivel. It depends. Sherry babies usually will come back from being shriveled. Uh, but I have noticed with some oncidiums, once they bloom, they shrivel. So. Uh, I don't see as much of the discoloration here, but I'm going to keep cutting uh, until hopefully I don't see that any more. I've gone ahead and I've kept making cuts within the plant. You can see I pretty much just dissected the whole thing. And uh, that was more for diagnosis on my behalf because I've never seen what these rings should look like and a healthy Oncidium. I've never divided up any of my Oncidiums before, I've just repotted them. But as you can see here, there's some pink. I, it, I was having trouble making clean cuts. I need to sharpen my instrument, apparently. In here, you can see the hint of pink. Let's see with this new growth right here. I'm not too concerned about preserving this orchid at this point, so let's just tear it apart and see how everything looks. Okay, and there is a hint of pink in there, but it's not very much. The thing that has me baffled is on this 
particular cutting right here. Now this was attached right here. You can see pink ring, pink ring. And then this growth, this new growth, was attached up here. Well, we can see in here no pink at the top there, but there is pink in here. It's not very noticeable on the camera, but it's there. This was here, like so, and this was here. So this would mean that the fusarium somehow was in the base of this pseudobulb down here, and that root structure and the growth in between, and then was in this offshoot, but not here, but here. So there's fusarium here, here, not here, but here. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Now, I'm going to go ahead and probably just end up throwing this away, because I have a whole bunch of sherry babies, and quite frankly, I just don't see a reason to risk it. That there's potential that it's possible that these rings are perhaps just a characteristic of this particular plant. Because in all of the dividing videos I was able to find, there weren't very many, there were only a few, and some of them were old and kind of blurry. There was pink discoloration. It's not very dark. It's getting darker as it's been sitting out in the elements. So I figure I may as well just be extra cautious here and just assume that it is. And I have so many other sherry babies, there's really no reason to hold on to this one. And uh, I have pretty much just destroyed this plant. On that note, I'm going to go ahead and keep on cutting it and see what I find. Just sort of for fun. See what's going on in there. Sterilize my area. Get rid of them. Uh, but I'll go ahead and talk about what I would do if I were to keep this. Now, I did a video uh, a few months ago on the fungicide that I use, and it is supposed to be effective against Fusarium. I've been using it for Phyllostacata, which is the black spot disease that's been in my Vandas. It's called Clearies 336, I believe, and I use it every other month. I give everything a spray. So, in this particular situation, I would go ahead, I would go ahead and clean out all of these dead roots, and I would probably end up keeping it in this glass vase. I would go ahead and drain it and fill it with maybe some hydrostone, maybe halfway up, put uh, maybe a layer of charcoal above that and a charcoal layer of charcoal below it, so have that hydrostone in the middle, or river pebbles, whatever you want to use, just something inorganic that I can keep clean. And then I would have the orchid set up as high as possible so that air can still move around the roots, and then I would keep water about halfway in this so that it can evaporate and help provide some humidity, but still hopefully have airflow up top. And then I would treat this. I would treat it, I would say, every uh, two weeks at a quarter of the dosage and see what happened from that. And then from that point on, if that wasn't appearing to be effective, then I would go up and move to a full dose every 30 days, which is pretty intense for the Clary's 336. That is a very powerful fungicide. And honestly, I would probably end up losing the orchid because that's a very potent way to treat it. Also, everything here needs to be sterilized with hydrogen peroxide. That's not going to kill the fusarium. Everything that's here is going to be treated with bleach. Um, I will probably just go ahead and throw the pot away. Terracotta pot, very porous. It's just a cheap azalea pot from Lowe's or Home Depot. I don't remember where I got it from. It's like $3. It can go. No big deal there. I'm not going to freak out about this. Because like I said, I do spray and treat every other month because I'm already trying to hold down that fella staccata. So, we'll just say this is Fusarium, because it probably is. I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of it. If I were to keep it, I would spray it, I would isolate it from everything else, like very far away from everything else. Odds are, since this one appears to have Fusarium, my other orchids probably have it too. I'm going to continue spraying them as I have been. What I lose, I lose. What I don't, I won't. The problem is there's just no way to tell for sure if it is Fusarium until you get in there and start cutting them up. But I'm not going to pull all my orchids out and start cutting them to pieces. Now, I don't buy new orchids very often anymore. In fact, I've been mostly trying to get rid of them because I have too many and I've been trying to switch over to only keeping orchids that I'm absolutely crazy about. Now, aside from these terrible looking roots, which I couldn't see until it fell over and the bark came out of the pot, 
I wasn't really seeing any symptoms. The pseudobulbs were somewhat wrinkled, but not dreadfully so. It's putting on a, a good amount of new growth every year, and it blooms every year. But perhaps the fusarium just creeped in sometime more recently, and I just happened to find it because perhaps these pseudobulbs actually died from being crushed, leading me to cut it open. But again, that's just so weird to me that I've been seeing the pink ring throughout everything except for that little piece of rhizome that attached this pseudobulb to this pseudobulb. It should be all the way through there. That's really bizarre. So I'm going to go ahead and cut in and look at the sections inside those other pieces. Perhaps that's characteristic. I, even if I find that that is the case with this, I can't say it is characteristic from one plant. But it'll give me a better idea. Okay, yeah. Went ahead. I made all the cuts, got in here. There are only a few spots that didn't have any type of ring in them. And again, they were like the rhizome places that went from pseudobulb to pseudobulb, which is where you should be seeing the pink ring. So I don't know what that's all about. Uh, this is likely Fusarium. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, well, I'm getting rid of this orchid. I'm not going to keep it. I'm not going to bother. Uh, there are treatments, but I'm already using a spray, so it's got to go. I could go ahead and try and save these pieces that have some roots on them, but like I said, I have enough of these sherry babies, and all my others look much better than this one, and luckily, there is only, uh, the place where this orchid was, there is one Vanda near it, so uh, luckily this one hasn't been near anything in several months, so I'm not terribly concerned, I'll just have to keep on spraying. It's time to start cleaning. Okay, so I've sprayed everything down with the bleach solution. It's a Korok solution. I'm going to go ahead and fill this up to soak those instruments. And then I have the ground and everything where the water has been touched. That's been soaking. Uh, for several minutes, have my bag of trash here, need to uh, wash my hands now. I'm even going to spray my hose down. Pretty much everything I've touched is getting sanitized with this dilution. I've gone ahead and put on gloves, make sure that this cleaner disinfectant is spread around how it needs to be. This is the dilution. I, you know, I hate doing this outside because I know that when I rinse this off, it's probably not great for the environment, but I, it is a diluted solution. So there's probably um, a couple tablespoons, if even, inside that bottle. I just want to make sure that the disinfectant, the bleach solution, is touching everything. And it's starting to rain, so I have to... Uh, I have to hurry up. Okay, I've switched over to recording with my phone because it's raining. Uh, this is the Clary's 3336. I was calling it 336. This is what I have been using. Guess I can't really say it's working that great after I found Fusarium on one of my plants. Uh, but maybe it has halted it and improved on it. I actually grabbed this with my other supplies, so I'm spraying this down too. Anything I have touched, including my phone at this point and whatnot, I'm going to let soak in the solution for a good 10 to 15 minutes and then rinse it off thoroughly. All right, it's been about 15 or 20 minutes. I disinfected my phone, everything. Luckily, the phone's waterproof, so I was able to clean it off, rinse it off. It was okay. I also have been thinking I need to retrace my steps because prior to doing this, I was all over the place. I went from down here, which is where that orchid was, walked around here. The ground was wet when I came outside. As you can see, it's raining again right now came over here, set the orchid down, noticed there were some orchids on the ground from the storm, picked those up, those two vandas, and I hung them on the side of the pond. That pond is not near the other orchids. I mean, it's across from them, so that's kind of near them. It's not really within a splashing range. So what I'm going to do tomorrow, because it's supposed to rain the rest of the day, I'm going to go ahead and do a full treatment with the Clary's 3336. In the video I did back in May where I was treating the uh, Phyllis with my Vandas, 
the math on the dose was really, really complicated. Also, I, I apologize for the noise. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait a few minutes and see if this dies down any. Be right back, hopefully. Now I'm trapped. Yep. Well, I guess I don't need to worry about rinsing anything off now, do I? It doesn't appear that the rain's gonna let up anytime soon. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this video off. The next video, tomorrow's video, or just the next video depending on when you're watching this, I am going to go ahead and treat all of my orchids, even though at this point the water's splattering all over the place. So, But um, I was due to do my next spray on the uh, 8th, so, and today's the 10th, so I'm a few days behind on that anyways. I'm going to do a full spray instead of a half, which is what I've been doing, uh, just like maintenance sprays. And, uh, you know, just have to keep our fingers crossed and hope for the best. I did go ahead and spray down my whole entire footpath area, rinsed it off, same thing with the gravel. I just have those two Vandas that I touched, and they'll, I mean, I could spray them now, but I don't really know what the purpose of that would be when it's raining. So I've gone ahead and I just moved them out into my lawn far away from my other plants. But like I said, if the one on Sidium had it, it's very possible that my entire collection does, or the majority of my collection does. But I'm still spraying just in case, have my fingers crossed, because the only two orchids that I've had that had the symptoms, the visible symptoms, that is, or orchids that I didn't really have near anything else. There's one other Vanda that was near that Oncidium. There it is. But it was up above it. That Oncidium that I just pulled apart was hanging down low by this fern, which that fern's probably going to go now, too. We will see. So, yeah. That's going to do it for today. Kind of an all-over-the-place video. I wasn't expecting to find that purplish-pink ring in there, so it sort of threw things in a different direction. Sorry if things are lengthy and all over the place and jumbled. My bad. Welcome to my channel. But yeah, that's going to do it for today. Tomorrow I'll go ahead and disinfect everything with the fungicide, or treat them with the fungicide, I should say. Then I have one Vanda that I've been suspicious of maybe having Fusarium, but it's it's had leaf loss, but it's been very, very, very slow, and it's been yellowing from the outside in instead of the inside out. But it's been kind of odd, and it has some roots kind of up high, so I think I can make a cut without actually even really hurting the orchid. So I figure I may as well do that, but I'll do all of that tomorrow, or the next video. Hope everybody's doing well. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment down below. I love talking to y'all. I try and upload multiple times a week. I'm also on Snapchat, Trot Plant Party, one word. Let me know your experiences with Fusariums, or if you've divided Oncidium Cherry Babies. Let me know if you've noticed these rings in your healthy Oncidiums. Uh, it doesn't seem likely, but I've never divided any of my Oncidiums. I just let them grow big and massive and leave them alone. So let me know. And I hope everybody's doing well, which I think I already said. As always, keep on growing.